Assalamualaikum Sayyidi. Alaykum Assalam Ramatullah. If we are fortunate enough to have a light deposited in our heart, can it be extinguished through bad characteristics and ignorance? <sighs> Everything can, because you can't say it can't be. Allah can do anything Allah wants to do. But generally the good deeds, they remain. And the only thing that pulls the good deeds is backbiting. And that pulls the good deeds of the servant out. Now if we do bad, then we make istighfar, inshaAllah Allah forgive and the servant then to be raised because they ask for forgiveness. That's why all of the awrads and the zikrs, the etiquettes that have been given is under the understanding that of course people are going to be sinning and going to be doing bad actions and that's why the shaykhs are asking, make your istighfar, make your salawat on Sayyidina Muhammad so that to be dressed by its blessings and its realities. They're not expecting people to be saints but Allah gave them guidance to go out and grab people whom are falling and whom are away from the path of realities and bring them back to that reality. So alhamdulillah Allah ghafoor raheem. But uh, to continuously do bad, not to do the zikrs, not to do the awrads, it's like saying that should I give myself completely to shaitan and then hope I have a good ending is most likely no. A person who gives themselves wholeheartedly to shaitan then falls into oceans of difficulty. So we pray that Allah always keep us with the lights of guidance and the love of Sayyidina Muhammad InshaAllah. <coughs> Uh, as Salaamu Shaykh Walaykum As Salaam Can you please explain the opening and closing of the heart? For example, sometimes everything seems perfect but sometimes this feeling fades. How can we keep this feeling of love? This is the battle, this is the great jihad that Prophet described. That the, the fight to keep your heart open and emanating with this beatific dress is the whole battle. That's why I said that before this night opens, people whom fight a night, two nights before, do you think it was a random attack by shaitan? You know that's what we said, how many years people want to do that, they got to be insane because they're not getting well. When you understand that holy nights are opening, holy tajallis are opening, then you understand shaitan is coming after you. He's not going to let you to enjoy that night, just you know, enjoy yourself. So this reality is that your heart has to always be and you see this on satellites, has to be like a flower, open, has love and it's ready for what? Sunshine. When the flower is open, it's taking all the sunshine that it can because it needs it and it survives by it. And as a result of taking the sunshine, it begins to send out perfumes and fragrances. And that's the system Allah made for all His creation, Allah not, is, doesn't discriminate. So say your technology is also same, your satellite if it's closed it can't transmit anything. So the satellite opens like a flower to receive the energy and the signal and as a result it begins to transmit what it has to transmit. So then shaitan knows and says, I'm going to close your flower, don't worry. Two nights before we start that event, I'm closing your flower. And they come and hit you with something to become anger, to become And what happened? You, 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 you got anywhere with Allah? You got anywhere with Prophet Or no, you're under the command, that's why we use the analogy of a dog. Imagine yourself with a leash and a collar and shaitan just holding you. You're nicely trained, I got you angry again before a holy event and you're now just you know like his lap dog, just sit there. At one point people are going to open and say, I'm not going to do that, there won't be a dog for shaitan. That I know he's coming to aggravate and agitate me, I'm going to make my wudu, I'm going to make my zikr, I'm going to make my salawats. And as long as you know that's coming, then fight it and fight him. Do everything that you can to bring that down. But don't go into these things with anger, your satellite closed, your rose closed and 
it's now can't receive any light, didn't hear anything, just angered from everything. So, no, this is a, a way that we, we've been given the teaching and we have to work it. And shaitan is also right there on the other side, he's a very powerful soccer player on the other team. And he's just kicking and uh, tripping you and doing everything possible. But well, these guys like, uh, what's that game you like, uh, Zishan, cricket? He, he doesn't play by the rules, he doesn't take the, the bat and hit the ball, he takes the bat and hits you. <laughs> it's like a London street fight. They had the cricket racket and they're running on the street hitting each other with the, the cricket thing. Not the ball. Yeah, so it means he's ready to come after you. You're not going to play and understand how he's doing it. InshaAllah. <coughs> uh, as salaamu alaykum Sayyidi. Wa alaykum as salaam What is the reality of seeing Shaykh Nazim Haqqani in dreams? It's beautiful. What's, what, what does that have to ask a question like that? The reality of a beatific vision is, is a beatific vision. But again, don't rely on dreams. Don't shoot yourself for dreams, don't start to think, oh well I want to have a dream of Shaykh Nazim, I want to have a dream of this because that becomes again you're, you're telling your, your creatures around you that come and talk into my ear at night, right? Because if you're asking for these types of things then these creatures all night long are coming to you because all they have to do is just tap your head and they can hotwire your television. Because your head is of no security, there's no security on your head system, right? But there's security on your heart. So the heart is much more difficult to penetrate and it's emanating a, an immense power. But for your head, if you're trying to get your spirituality through your head, all well, one of these ifrit just sit there and put onto your head every type of hallucination and every type of uh, dirtiness, nastiness, whatever they want, just they tap your head and the heart wire the signal and send you exactly the khatir, the thought that they want. So we don't try to sit and ask for that. Then when you see a vision of the shaykhs that has its own understandings of the shaykh coming and giving guidance and that's something just private and personal. And if the shaykh is coming in, in full sunnah and in full appearance then they're giving you information, guidance, whatever it is. If you see them in an incomplete state Again, that's also a warning of from the mirror that something is off in, in, your, in your reality. So it has different understandings, it's not just so easy. I saw Shaykh come, he looked casual and we were walking somewhere and he was teaching me something. It should be always in full uh, sunnah of Sayyidina Muhammad and that represents then from guidance. If you see an imperfection, it's a reflection of your state there's an imperfection and you're not able to see the shaykh in a perfected state, inshaAllah. <coughs> uh, as salaamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi ya Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam What should we do if we experience too much horrific dreams again and again? <clears throat> One, let's make sure what, what you're watching that you're not bringing the energy in and, and the, the mind could be very soft and, and absorb lots of different images than the ta'weez the wudu, all the spiritual practices for energy, how to keep your wudu, how to keep your energy, how to make your muraqabah and tafakkur so that you can bring the energy of the shaykhs. And then the, you have your taweez, taweez in the house, taweez in the rooms, everything. You, you have to be prepared for spiritual battle. So that's why then you email help me at nurmuhammad.com and live your life with the, all your spiritual practices for spiritual battle with the shaitans that are becoming more and more prevalent. So the, the, the earth, what we talked about manifestation is they're manifesting very fast, they're manifesting very, very evil characteristics. So they manifest through these social medias, every evilness of people. That's why we said in the end you'll see 99% of people are no longer human. They don't have their humanity within them and the state of what Allah wanted for them. So they have given themselves to demonic desires and as a result they move with dajjal. <coughs> as salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa If we have lots of pain in the spine, is that related to bad energy? 
You know, it could be anything, it could be medical, so you have to seek always medical advice. That if there's something happening with your, your back pain and, and the bones, the vertebrae and the, the fusion of the bones. And then there also can be spiritual based on the energy flowing and positive energy and negative energy and, and where are they sort of uh, clashing at the lower back which is the area of the abdomen and the belly button. Because a clash always of good practices, good energy and all the bad energy from the material world that comes. So if the material world is coming up and the heavenly energies are coming, all of the problems are within and Prophet described every sickness, its root is within the stomach because the two energy forces are clashing at that point of the belly button. So the front is the belly button, the back then is that lower part of the back which I think 90% of back pain and back difficulties is that region. So the burdens of being carried or the energies that are coming then can have a great deal to do with that against the taweez, the meditations, building your spiritual connection, always keeping yourself in wudu and how to ground negative energies and to be careful of what energies and, and where you go. Always go to places which have more positive energy, connect to the, the live broadcast so that to dump the negative energies and to pull excessive amounts of positive energies with the broadcast, with the live broadcast or even to watch it on a rebroadcast. That connecting your heart, listening to the zikr and that that negative energy Allah to take it away inshaAllah. Uh, as alaikum dear Mawlana Walaykum as salaam What do we do when we feel an invisible block in front and behind, blocking all sense of movement, growth in one's life? Forgive my asking. Sure, no problem. No, don't pay attention to those things. These are a lot of uh, cultural things as either people say, oh I have jinns are bothering me, I have a blockage in my life and the, the, these things, don't, don't worry about these things if, if you're following everything that they're teaching. Again, have your taweez, do your muraqabah, that's the foundation of a teacher like myself. If Allah is guiding you to this channel because we specialize in this dimension of teaching, we specialize in tafakkur, our ijazahs based on these subjects. I'm not uh, a Qur'an teacher, that's not my ijazahs to, to teach you the qirat of Qur'an but Allah has given us our ijazah, Prophet has given the ijazah and the ijazahs based on the teachings I do and the language that I teach it in. So I don't, I don't teach in, in, you know, in French. So everything very specific. If you're listening, hearing and a part of this broadcast then you should be very strong in your meditation and tafakkur because Allah guided you to the shaykh of tafakkur. So if you're with the shaykh of tafakkur and you're not learning tafakkur then you know something is not right because everything Allah knows best. Every sickness Allah has a remedy. So the sickness that's coming and Allah sent to go to this shaykh for the remedy. Because you're going to need it now, many of them need it now because of the difficulty they're having or you're going to need it from what's coming onto this earth because Allah knows what's coming to you. You may not know what friends and guests are coming to you but Allah knows, oh there's going to be a whole bunch of guests written to come to that person, he, he better be in a muraqabah class, <laughs> right? The difficulties that come in life, Allah knows what they were but you have to have your strong connection that's why Allah sent you there. As salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam Sayyidi, what's the reality behind time travel? The reality behind time travel? That is very real. Allah, <laughs> that requires its own so bad on, on, on movement and energy and, and the movement through time and space. And, and most important uh, time travel is a timeless reality. Is that when you make your tafakkur, make your connection, we're asking always to leave this timed reality of the body. And as soon as you sit and meditate, they can grab your soul and Prophet described that one hour of tafakkur, it's hadith, one hour of tafakkur is like 70 years of worship. That's what Einstein said, didn't he? He said, if you were to move at the sp speed of light and come back, Seventy years would have moved on this earth. Why did they use that term? 
because Prophet is teaching that as soon as you enter into this dimension it's a timeless dimension. So as soon as they grab you and you make a connection with your soul and practice it, practice it, practice it. One year, a one hour in that meditation or however long they're doing the meditation could be many years in spiritual dimension that you spent with them and been dressed and blessed with it. And that's why Prophet emphasized it so much that put that whole information out. Imagine one person doing that one hour and it's like 70 years of worship. And if that person teaches that and does that hours a day, hours a day, then you understand the ajr and the reward for that servant is in thousands of years. Because one hour for you is 70 years. What if the person is doing that all the time? Then every day is how many hours of them in worshipness, 10 hours, 20 hours, that's 700 years. So any way you look at it, it could be immense. And they are time travelers. Their light and their soul is moving throughout Allah's creation. And in what dimensions it's moving, then what lights are appearing, what, what abilities Allah has given to that soul is a infinite in its understanding. It can't be understood or limited. But to not confuse people, do the meditation and tafakkur inshaAllah so that you can connect to a timeless reality. As alaikum Ya Sayyidi Walaykum As salaam wa How can we warn our families and relatives about the Dajjal when, me, when many are not caring about the end signs? Yeah, we can't. And in the end you have a lifeboat, sit in it and just row. Whoever comes then Allah guided them, they're in it. And whoever goes, they're out of it. But you cannot bring anybody in because guidance is only from Allah and the days become more and more difficult, less and less people may be coming. And it's not for everyone to have their entire family come to the guidance because it doesn't work that way. That Prophet had many whom he loved that he would have wanted to be guided. And these are even extraordinary times of difficulty. So we make a boat of our belief, we bring the people whom we want, if they come, alhamdulillah, if they listen, alhamdulillah. And in the end it may not have been written and they find themselves drifting and that's whatever Allah has, has written. So the main thing and the most important is save yourself, is make sure your connection is strong, your practices are strong because whatever is coming is going to require your strength and your ability. That's why when the plane is crashing the first thing they tell you is, don't put the mask on your kids. Put the mask on yourself because if you take this and begin to lose your consciousness trying to play with everybody else and putting a mask and you don't have a firm mask you will be out and everybody else will be out too. So the same is in this days of difficulty and calamity your faith has to be strong, your practices have to be strong so that your mask is on tight then anyone you're dealing with your faith is strong. But when people are not strong in their own practices but want to spend all the time making everybody come, everybody do, everybody listen and before they know it when the tornado comes they all got blown away from difficulties, inshaAllah. <coughs> As Alaikum wa rahmatullahi ya Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Can we also keep the awrad and zikr practices of the tariqah we were before? As long as you keep the practices of the tariqah that you're in now and those become something extra, right? The zikrs and the awrads, it's just something extra you're doing. But if, if you really want to make sure your connection is correct, then leave everything and do the zikr that you've been given by Mawlana Shaykh. Because that we know it works, we know the formula works, so let's describe that as if we're cooking a dish, a specific soup. The ingredients that Mawlana Shaykh gave, we know what that soup will taste like, its protection and its ability. But if you make that soup and add ten other things then we don't know what you've made. And when you call and say, it's not working, this happening or I'm seeing this or this difficulty is coming, then that's something different. So the ones whom are safest is they do the awrad, they do the connection, they do the meditation and if they have extra time and they want to recite, recite more salawats. 
and they make much more salawats and they go from 10, 20,000 salawats per day. If you still have time then do the awrad, the etiquette that is in, in the app. The read the surahs for each prayer, do the whole awrad for each, there's an etiquette for each of the namaz, each of the salah. And I don't think you'll have time after you do all those. <coughs> As Salaamu Alaykum Ya Sayyidi Alaykum As Salaam wa Can the asa cane mm-hmm. made of alloy or steel be used or should it be wooden only? Yeah, it can be used if it's a, a metal cane. But the, the wood has its own specific grounding and the wood has its own sort of barakah and blessing that carries the light and wood carries that light. So each has a different reality. The asa can be a metal asa that you carry just you know as a more firmer hold on it and can carry your weight. So you can have more than one asa, don't have to have limited to one. So have wooden asa, we have uh, uh, another asa with metal handles, uh, we have one with designs with with amber and, and different things to it so it doesn't matter. But the, the one that has wood on it and wood tasbih, it carries a light because the, the zikrs that we do, the practices that we do are producing energies and energies go very nicely into wood and the wood absorbs the energy and the metal may have a different, it doesn't have that absorption and then that reality. As Salaamu Alaykum are backbiting and scandal mongering forgived? Backbiting and scandal mongering are forgiven? InshaAllah, why not Allah Qafur Raheem that stop the backbiting and, and spreading rumors and gossips and inshaAllah Allah forgive the servant and the one whom been oppressed then forgive them in their hearts for what the people are doing. But the main teaching is to understand the reality and try our best to make istighfar, make tawbah, make salawat on Sayyidina Muhammad wasallam. that Prophet intercede for us wasallam, for all our bad characteristics and we live in a life filled with slander, filled with backbiting because just turning on the television. So backbiting is not only you talk bad about somebody and not in their presence. But Prophet described even listening to the backbiting, you participate by listening. So that's a, a very difficult task in a world where you turn on television and it's just backbiting. The news is not news, it's that guy backbiting everybody that he didn't like. So it's in our very deep in our sort of society right now, very dangerous. Uh, As Salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam um, Not sure if this is a correct question okay. but uh, is there any reality behind seeing a skunk in a dream or physically? A skunk? Skunk. <laughs> I would imagine yeah. <laughs> any type of difficulty or pestilence is always a warning of something difficult that will be coming around. So it could be that, it could be that you watch again because dream and dream interpretation is… is, is, is is not something solid because people are very now spread. You could be have watching a movie. So many, many people were affected by spiders because they watched spider movies. Uh, was it an- Anthropia? There was a scary yeah. movie where spiders were coming out. Yeah. After that many people were shocked and they had horrific dreams of spiders. So we don't know what people have watched, what they did, what they saw that brought on an image they didn't like and now they're scared of this creature, scared of that creature and they could be then excessively thinking about it because some people's minds now are very manic. They take a thought and they don't stop thinking about it because of too much caffeine, too much different foods. So there are many variables that are happening on why people think they're dreaming about something, overly thinking about something. So we we try not to go in that direction and try to answer that, those kind of things. InshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzat amma yasifun wa salaamun al mursaleen muhammadillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati muhammad al-mustafa wa bi siri surat al-fatiha.